Welcome back to Junior Reviews of Middle Tennessee. As always, I'm Joe. <laughs> Chef Joe, to some. Uh, we're going to do a little blue basket over here. Look at this guy right here. Now this is uh, 88 Proof Polo Club American Dry Gin. I went to one of my liquor stores that I frequent. Um, ran into a very nice woman who was looking at a bottle of gin that I actually was going to buy. I, had, I, was, I was thinking of it today. It's the Empress 1908. And we got into a long conversation of how it's made and what she should do. And hopefully she's watching this video because she has the information for the gin reviews. And I hope to hear from you. And to see what your impression was on that empress all right so back to this so I, I saw this bottle too and I said oh you know what I've never even heard of this gin before and uh, it's a contemporary American gin but juniper is in the lead which I love I got a little information here from what it is what it's about and all that good stuff I usually do so it's, like I said, 88 proof, so that's 44% alcohol per volume, which is a good number. It's not great, but it's a good number. Uh, we are going with uh, the botanical. Now, this is very interesting. It's steeped botanicals. Now, I know we've had a gin in the past where they use the tea bag, which is the hat trick which was a horrible gin. Now, th they don't do the same thing here. This gin is distilled 10 times, which is unbelievable. 10 time distillation, that takes a long time. It's a small batch distillery um, out of Win Win Wisconsin, uh, which up close there's Ange. On the bottom of the bottle, it's a uh, Minhas distillery, Minhas. Here's the bottle up and close and personal. Uh, the, the only thing I'm hoping for here that that because it looks almost similar to Ralph Lauren's <laughs> polo cologne let's hope it's not anything like that but uh, it's, a, it's a lovely bottle and the neck is a little short I do see a it looks like a natural cork but it could be synthetic you know as they do there's the uh, the name of the uh, distillery menace all right, so the botanical list on this gin is very short, very short and to the point. If I was to put only, what is it, one, two, three, four botanicals in my gin, I would definitely use some of the ones that they use. Uh, Juniper, of course, which is their lead, which you know how I feel about that. I love that. You know, If you don't have Juniper, you don't have gin. Lemon peel, okay. Citrus, I love it. Coriander, we got a little bit of the spice right there, a little bit of the earthiness, and licorice. I mean, that's not a bad for, for four botanical, a four botanical gin. So let's hope that the, <laughs> if I can get this open, let's hope that's enough for, for, uh, for what we consider a good gin. Uh, the retail price on this bottle, believe it or not, for 10 times distillation is $15, which is exactly what I paid for. So, I, I you know, I've been, uh, there's there's the review I did of the, uh, Mar the Georgia Americas, Georgia um, gin, which I totally forget the name of now, because it's in that plain Jane bottle. I'm sure you all remember. That one blew my socks off and that was like a 10 12 dollar bottle of gin so let's hope this one could do the same thing all right all right let's hear we get a squeak out of this oh there's a squeak <laughs> i haven't had a squeak in a long time off the cork right on polo club 88 proof <laughs> wait It makes me so happy. I know. I'm nuts. All right, you ready? Let's do the old popper. Let's see what we got. Oh! <laughs> we have natural cork here. Natural cork. Rock on, you guys. 
you master distiller, whoever thought about putting this. Now, I gotta say, this is a very cheap <laughs> cap. I mean, you can't have them all, I guess, right? But hey, a natural cork, rock on, I love that. It'll last forever. Okay, I, I'm not getting much off of the, uh, the cork itself, so that means we're gonna have to do the old uh, shatter. Now the problem with this right here, I already can foresee it, 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 it might spill. A short neck like this that's real fat might have a little spillage. Let's hope I'm really a pro at doing this. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Got that. Right on, right on, Joe. Okay, I'm gonna put you guys right there. Wait, let's see my little my little holder. <laughs> I had to put it on something because it was so damn small, I wouldn't even know it's a gin. Alright, let's see, we're going to do the old uh, snifter. Well, that felt great, I just inhaled some. Um, <laughs> I'm not getting much, I'm not getting much off of the smell, and that's kind of disappointing. All right, well, you know what, there is there is a little bit there now. It's coming in. Oh, look at that. All right, you know what, that's what I'm getting. The juniper, I'm getting a resinous. And you can see, see the legs starting to form? That's the, the, the oils from the juniper. See it? See it right there? I hope you can see it. But that is not sugar as it would be in wine, but that is the actual juniper, the, the resinous uh, oil. Uh, from the juniper, so uh, you know it might be a creamy, a creamy mouthfeel, which I do love on a gin. All I'm, all I'm getting really is the juniper, and then right at the back, there's there's a hint of citrus. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say lemon. It's it's there. Uh, I can't I can't smell the coriander or the licorice, so that kind of worries me a little bit. But let's do this one neat, like we always do, and see what happens. Oh yeah. Wow. Smooth. Mmm. The resinous -y, piney, almost like a spruce bow. Yeah. Mmm. There's a floralness now that's coming out. I, I, I you know. This alcohol percentage at 44% is very comfortable. It's very comfortable. Uh, burn isn't as strong or as hard or as traveling as most other gins in my uh, fast collection here. Um, take on. Uh, you know what though? Like I said before, it's very clean. It's a very clean, bright, I would say bright juniper -y forward which I love I love London dry I, I this is this is calling this one I'm gonna say an American dry which I've never heard of before no I'm sorry it's a dry oh yeah it is yeah, American dry gin come on Joe you get with the program here buddy American dry gin I mean uh, I've never seen or heard that phrase before, and I have many American gins here. But hey, you know what? Let's hope uh, this isn't a revolution here, huh? Hey, you like that? I know you do. Hey guys, uh, I want to show you my two new glasses. So, all right. So here, here's what happened the other day. You know how on most of my reviews I talk about how I break most of my goblets which are these right here. It's not the greatest, it's very flimsy. It's, you know, the stem is you know, got this narrow point here. It's usually where it cracks off or I get a crack here and sides down. Uh, so I was cleaning up uh, around my gin bottles and 
I smashed one of them into the other. I mean, smashed it. And it didn't crack or break or anything. All right, so I had an epiphany. And I don't know why I haven't thought of this before, but you know, sometimes this happens. Gin bottles are made of very, very tough, hear that? You can barely hear a knock. Tough glass, thick glass. I mean, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for so the bottle doesn't break. Now, trust me, I have broken bottles before. None of these, thank God. In, 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 uh, <laughs> in a bar I once worked at down in South Florida way. Um, I'm sure some of you who are watching this remember this story. Uh, there was <laughs> the back room, there was a tiny alley, a hallway that led into the storage room. Such a bad story. And so, uh, you know, I was the bar back and I was the, the cook, chef, whatever you want to call it, uh, most days. And uh, I was asked to go get uh, a case of, I'm pretty sure it was uh, well vodka, I'm pretty sure. And uh, there's what, 12 to a case around there? So, the owner of the bar had a. <laughs> Had cameras ever, thank God she did, for many other reasons, but I remember the one camera was shooting down right where I was, and I picked up this this case, and I'm a pretty big guy, I don't know if you can tell that from these videos, but yeah, I'm a big man, and this hallway, like I said, was very narrow, and I picked up the box, and I started walking towards the other way, and I tripped, I don't remember on what, I mean, it was, there was all this crap against the wall, and I tripped on something and the whole box went down and just smashed. <laughs> it just smashed to pieces. And so and I was okay. I wasn't hurt or anything, thank God. And, you know, uh, the noise that that made, though, is I'll never forget. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure there's, uh, well, maybe there was footage of it from that camera. Which I'm sure at some point someone rewatched over and over and over again. Anyway, back to my new glasses. So I decided to purchase some thick walled glasses. And look how beautiful this is. Isn't that really nice? Oh, my light's not. I'm going to have to change the batteries on that. Uh, so let's see here. I think let's see it in this light. Isn't that really nice? Can you see this? Beautiful. It, it, it stems. I mean, it's I'm not going to lie. It's the pioneer woman, lady, whoever the hell, you know, the cooking on the cooking channel. I, I'm not into it. I'm not into that whole program. I've watched her with my mother, I think, once or twice. You know, I'm a chef myself, but uh, anyway, she has taken over uh, Walmart especially. <laughs> and uh, But she makes some really nice heavy-duty glasses here. I got this one too, which is a turquoise. I thought, you know, what a beautiful set of these uh, glasses here for, for gin. For for any kind of drink, actually. They're tumblers. This is a tumbler, right? And this is a stein, in a way. Um, I'm pretty sure it was 15 and a half ounces on that. So that's that's not too bad. I think I'm going to use this one. Now, nah, you know what? We can't. we got to use this one. It, it almost matches the, uh, the gin bottle there, right? All right. <laughs> Without further further ado here, let's do the uh, old GNT. All right, so you got my ice chunk right here. Oh, look at that! That's how sweet that is. Now, if you, uh, if any of you are new watching this channel, watching this video right here, there is a video that I posted on my uh, group page on Facebook, but not on YouTube. So you'd have to. You'd have to join the group on Facebook under Joseph Noto, my name. Um, but uh, there's a link on YouTube to find it and my group, not the video, of how I make said ice. I make clear, purified ice. Very simple, couple steps, done. Uh, but there's a video out there, so if you're interested in that, please watch it. Alright, so. We're gonna go with our standard shoddy, shoddy here. 
and we're gonna do our GNC like we do. You like my new shot glass I got too? But that was nice. A nice little addition. I mean, it's, you know, like every other shot glass, it just doesn't have the line. So I could drink more. <laughs> Alright. Oh. Well, let's see. Oh, look at that. Look how it's doing that. Isn't that beautiful? It's just dripping through it right down to the bottom. Uh, yeah, so I just made a major mistake there. But the good thing is it's not very uh, <laughs> pungent, this gin, so I don't think I'm going to stink like a gin head that much more than I usually do, so. All right. Well, there's no reason not to put the cork back on this, and uh, let's do that because, yeah. Love it. All right, let's hope the GNT lives up to what I've read on line. So, Fever Tree, of course. So, tonight I have <laughs> inhaled into my lungs this gin. First time doing that on the show. And I spilled a little bit, not too much, on my leg here. So, today is my Friday. Just got through my week and my weekends here. Bird. And it was uh, it was a pretty good week. I mean, you know, I wasn't that crazy as well Friday night was, but Saturday was not that that great, and today really wasn't that great either. But uh, you know, Friday for me right now, and I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of this. Now. We're, let's try it first, like I do, you know, without the uh, citrus. Let's see how this the tonic, the quinine mixes with this polo. Wow. Well, this amplifies the botanicals now, which I love the way that tonic does. Um, it's not very overpowering the tonic itself, which is nice. Uh, the juniper shines right through this, but I am definitely picking up citrus notes. I'm picking up the lemon. I am getting the licorice on the back end of the tongue, and there is the coriander, the spice aspect. Very small amount, though. It's not very, very strong. You know, I would recommend this gin to someone out there, and I've said this before, that says, I hate gin. Okay, I know. You hate gin. Why? Why do you hate gin? Because the first gin you had was in your father's and mother's liquor cabinet, and it was Burnett's or Gordon's or some schlock gin that was on the bottom shelf, and your father or your mother or your grandfather, whoever, bought a cheap, cheap bottle of gin and had it in that shelf since 1952. That's why you don't like gin. That is not gin, okay? That's turpentine. That's floor cleaner. That's polo, okay? That's cologne right there. You don't want to drink that shit. I'm telling you right now, I know from experience, much experience, you don't want cheap gin. Now, that being said, this is a cheap gin, and this is a very good gin to start with. If you have had an issue with gin in the past because you don't like the piney taste, which I hate hearing that. But I understand it's not everyone's preference and you know that's why the gin shelf has only like five or six gins and the whiskey shelf has the whole store. And I understand that. But again, if you can find this gin on the bottom shelf, because that's where it'll be, it is a very, very inexpensive inexpensive gin uh, 15 bucks like I said before is not a bad $15 gin right here to, to throw at and you will experience juniper you will experience a 44% where you can see my face is getting redder by the moment it is not very strong 
It's not gonna knock you on your ass. It's going to not, you know, not get you smashed, and you'll end up waking up in the morning, lemon, and having uh, you know popcorn throughout the whole uh, domicile where you live. <laughs> it's another show, another story. Lime, I gotta do it tonight. You know what I thought? I and mean, it was like one of the first times I've had this thought in a very long time, but I, I'm, I have grapefruit, I'm just not going to do the grapefruit, I'm just going to do lime, lemon, and orange, but I'm going to keep all the uh, pieces of citrus in here, because I think, because I was reading the botanicals, and how there's not that many, I thought maybe the, the uh, skins, uh, the oils in the skins that I did pre-scrape with my fork side of my stir here, um, would bring out a little bit more of that lemon peel that's that's the only citrus botanical. Also, I thought it would bring out a little bit more of the coriander and on the back end of the tongue, uh, some more of that juniper, but I got a feeling it's gonna be more juniper than the coriander since it's very juniper-laden gin here. Mm hmm That's very good. That's very good, it's very, like I said before, it's very clean. Your palate, it doesn't have to be as refined as, say, mine. I don't like being too cocky or arrogant, but I think I do have a very good palate. I think it has come back since my divorce last year, <laughs> which is awesome. I love that. A good thing came out of the divorce, right? She got the farm and the goats. I got my palate back, so it's all good in the end. Hmm. Yeah, this is awesome. Okay, like I was just saying before that tangent, um, this is a summer day, again, West Palm Beach. No, that's not going away. West Palm's not the nicest beach. Let's go south today. Let's we always go north to, you know, uh, Port St. Lucie and Ju <laughs> Jupiter or Juno Beach. Let's go, let's go south today. Today we're sitting down in Fort Lauderdale, the nice part of Fort Lauderdale, where the bars are, and you know, you got the, the shops and everything, and you have that beautiful, the wall next to the ocean, and it's not like a friggin' mile and a half walk, it's right there, and you park your car, you get a little something to eat, maybe, then you go, you know, sit on the beach, you have your cooler with you, you have a couple of these already pre-planned, I could, look, I'm, I'm just relaxing right now thinking about that. Oh, man, I wish I was there. <sighs> soon enough, though, I'll be back and uh, visiting family soon. I, uh, I miss you guys down there. I really do. All right, well, uh, this is getting to be a very long review, but uh, I hope it was worth... Uh, my two cents on this uh, Polo Club American Dry Gin, 80 proof or 88 proof and 44 uh, percent. Like I said, it was distilled 10 times, so it is a very clean gin. I don't understand how the, they got their price point. It's a small distillery. I mean, I've done my research. I've actually seen it. Um, I mean, it, it, it goes to show, you know. Like, Okay, real quick, real quick too, because I told I told my boys I'd do this. Uh, Port Royal here in Spring Hill Liquor Store. Okay, if you guys haven't been there yet, you you owe them a visit. My boys over there, I uh, I talked to my guy about a week ago, and I asked him. I told him I you know I tell him about the channel, I tell him about gin, and I love it, and I you know I tell everyone about gin and liquor stores, but I asked if he can get me the Navy strength gin and and at the time he said yeah and that was it I walked away and thought you know all right well you know if he gets it he gets it and if he doesn't he doesn't so the other day I go into the store and I'm looking uh, you know on their their gin shelf which doesn't have a lot of gins but I'm, I'm hoping they're gonna add some more soon with my suggestions and right next to the regular Plymouth was this Navy strength I you know it lifted my 
heart that day. I was having kind of a rough day. That lifted me because there's like four or five guys that run that store. Uh, Egyptian? You guys are awesome. Let me just tell you that, okay? I, I really appreciate you looking out for the small guy who comes in there, you know, does a little chit chat. Who knows if you really, you know, care about what I'm saying. Obviously you do. And as I thank them for getting me the Navy Strength Plymouth, which is one of my favorite gins of all time, he said to me, this is your liquor store. <laughs> very, very nice. Very cool. Guys, I appreciate you. At the end of the song here, we're going to end this video, all right? So uh, salute, cheers from me to you, to answer you, to everyone else here in Middle Tennessee. I hope you all the best. Drink gin, enjoy. And if you have any questions or anything, remember, just uh, send me a text or a message. That's the way to do it. All right. Adios. Good night. Cheers.